Imagine you're working as a data analyst for a retail company and this company operates multiple stores across the country. They sell various products and they collect data from every sale, including the customer information, the store details, and the product details. Over time, the data set becomes very large and repetitive because for every transaction, the same product, customer, and store information is being repeated. To analyze the data efficiently, we need to remove the redundancy and the repetition and normalize the data, which is what I'm going to be showing you how to do in today's video here. So as you can see in my data set, I have a list of unique transaction IDs. And for each ID, I have the store information where this transaction happened, the product information of that transaction, and the customer information of that transaction. Now the issue is that I have many stores that are making transactions. So these store names are being repeated for every other transaction. The same thing goes for the product information because of course the same product is being sold many times over. And same goes for the customer because the customer, the same customer could be purchasing many products over and over again, as you can see. So we want to be able to normalize the data and I'll be showing you how we can do that in today's video. What we'll be doing is we're going to take this data into Power Query where we're going to make three separate tables, one for the store information, one for the product information, and one for the customer information. And then from this master table, we're going to delete all of the non-relevant information, and we're only going to keep the transactional information and the store ID, product ID, and the customer ID, because those IDs are unique identifiers that are related to their respective data sets. For store ID, these are all the informations that are specific to that store ID. For product ID, this is all the information that's relevant to that specific product ID. And for customer ID, this is all its relevant information. So we'll be creating separate tables and then we're going to be using Power Pivot to then create relationships using the unique keys with the master table. And then once we make those relationships, we're going to be able to have a cleaner data set and we're going to be able to generate analytics using our pivot tables for those final normalized tables. So we're going to start off in Power Query, then we're going to move to Power Pivot. And lastly, we're going to be making a pivot table. So to get started, the first thing I want to do just for due diligence is to name the table. So as you can see, I've already named my table transaction information, and this is my master table. Then I'm going to go into data and click on this button to insert all of this information, this data table into Power Query. Now that the table is loaded onto Power Query, I want to create three separate duplicates of this table. So I'm going to duplicate this table three times. Now for each duplicate table, I'll be creating a respective table for the customer ID, product ID, and store ID, which is going to have only that respective information. We'll be linking those tables to our master table later on in Power Pivot as well. So I'm going to go into transaction info to this duplicate table and this table, I want to be the store information table. So it's going to have all the information from the store ID, all the way to the manager column. So I've just told, held shift in my keyboard and selected all these columns. I'm going to right click and remove other columns. And now we have only the store information in here. So I'm going to rename this to store underscore info. And then I'm going to go into the second duplicate. And I want this table to be dedicated to the product information. So I'm going to select the product ID all the way to the price, all these columns, right click and remove other columns. And as you can see, this has only product specific information with the product ID being the unique identifier for this table. So we're going to go ahead and rename this to product info. And then lastly, I'm going to go into my last table. This is going to be my customer specific uh, table. So I'm going to find 
the customer ID column all the way to the very last column, which um, denotes the loyalty program of the customer. And I'm going to go ahead and right click, remove other columns. And as you can see, now we have only customer information in here. So I can rename this to customer underscore info. Now I want to go back to these tables. So we want to make sure that we're getting rid of the duplicates as well. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So the store ID is unique, but of course there are, there's one store that's making multiple sales. So I'm going to go into store ID, remove rows, remove duplicates. So there's only three stores in our entire data table, which is this long that are unique. Okay. So these are the three unique stores. Now the product information, same thing, product ID, remove rows and remove duplicates. So there's only seven products that sold customer information, remove rows, remove duplicates, 11 customers that purchased from us. We had about a hundred transactions. So that's about 10 transactions on average uh, per person. So now that we've done all of that, we're going to go back to our main transaction information table. Now this table can only have the transactional information, the transaction ID, the date it occurred, the quantity, the total, and then of course the unique identifiers. So the store ID, the product ID, and the customer ID. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the other columns that don't matter to us. So I'm going to select these columns which do matter to us. And then I'll hold control and select this product ID one. And then once again, I'll hold control and I'll select the customer ID one. And then I'll right click, remove other columns. And now we only have the transactional transaction related information, as well as the three keys that are related to their individual tables. So store ID, it has its own table. Product ID has its own table. Customer ID has its own table as well. Now that we've done this, I'm going to hit close and load and close and load two. I want this to be in only create connection mode because I don't want to load the data just yet. And I also want to add this to data model. This is going to allow us to create those relationships that we were talking about in power pivot, which is going to be our next step. So I'm going to press OK here. Now, once this is loaded on uh, into the queries, we're going to go into power pivot manage data model. And here is our transaction table that we cleaned or normalized just earlier in power query. Now I'm going to go into diagram view and we can see the four tables. So this was the main master table, which we cleaned up. These were the three tables that we created. Now we can establish relationships using the unique identifiers between these tables. So remember the customer ID, in the customer information table corresponds to the customer ID in the transaction information table. Now the transaction info table has redundancies. It has duplicates, right? Because one customer may purchase many times, one product may have many sales and one store may make many sales. So to take that into account, we want this to be a one to many relationship where each of our unique product identifier tables, the store info, the product info, and the customer info, they have one unique product or store or customer ID. But the transaction info, it has multiple duplicates. So we're going to start with these tables, customer ID, and we're going to drag it to the customer ID here. This is going to create a one to many relationship. As you can see, where we started our click, it's one. Where we ended the drag, it's at asterisk. So one to many relationship. For the product ID, we're going to start here, drag it down to the product ID over here. That creates a one to many relationship, which is exactly what we want. Then store ID, we're going to link it to the store ID in the transaction information table. And there we go. There we have it. So now that we've done that, we can go into pivot table and we can generate our pivot table in a new worksheet. I'll press OK. And there we go. So now we can generate the pivot table as we wish. I've given an example of how I have done my pivot table right over here. As you can see, I've created some slicers as well. 
and this pivot table is showing me uh, it breaks down the sales by city and then by product and then it shows me the total sales of each product and then the total quantity of each product and then if I kind of minimize these I can see which city sold the best so as you can see um, Red Deer had the best sales out of the three and then of course I can go ahead and use my slicers to filter the data so I can see uh, did the customers with the loyalty program purchase more well if I click yes as you can see the sales were just over eight thousand dollars for the customers who did not have a loyalty program it was just three thousand dollars so making having a loyalty program does make a difference in sales we can tell that and then this is just a list of my suppliers I can use these slicers as well to filter the data as I need to and as I'm doing all this I have my chart that's constantly being updated as well to show me the product sales as well so that's how we normalized our data set that looked like this into a clean data set that's normalized and that has separate tables for each information set and then we analyze the table using pivot tables, pivot charts, and slicers. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do drop a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions whatsoever, drop them down in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you shortly on the next video.